Go. Yep. Jamaica, heartbeat of the world. Let's go. Thank you for joining our travel conversation series, bringing you information on destinations and hotels from around the world. I'm Vanessa with Unforgettable Escapes. I'm very excited to be here with you today with Louise our BDM from Eastern Canada with the Jamaica Tourist Board. Welcome, Louise. Thank you. Hi, Vanessa. How are you? I'm doing wonderful with this heat, <laughs> finally. <laughs> We're only missing a Caribbean breeze or a Caribbean sea. A little yeah. rum punch with that would be perfect. Yeah, so it would be nice to have a view of the beautiful ocean from my window. <laughs> well, we have it on our screen. Yes, <laughs> that'll have to do for today. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here today to bring us some information about your beautiful destination of Jamaica. So I'm going to start off with some questions. Um, I mean, most people know where Jamaica is, is located, but for those who may not know where within the Caribbean it's located, could you let us know where it's located within the Caribbean? When is the best time to travel weather-wise and, you know, roughly when the peak travel seasons are? So Jamaica is south of Cuba and it's located in the Caribbean Ocean. And one of the great advantage of that is that it is warm weather year round, even in the month of January. And it's also a calm ocean. So very rarely would your clients have a red flag on the beach advising them that they cannot go swimming. Um, we really sell Jamaica year round. The average temperatures are 28 to 32, 33 degrees. We do have rainy seasons like the rest of the Caribbeans, which are the months of May, June, and then late summer, September, early October. But if you talk to any Jamaican, they'll tell you that the island is blessed. Very rarely is the island touched directly by a hurricane. So very safe to travel. In the rainy seasons, we're not talking monsoon either. It's just the sky that is more gray, light showers. Sometimes it's not even worth going in. So year round. And we're finding in the past few years that Jamaica actually sells just as strong during the summer months of July and August as winter, simply because we have a strong honeymoon market destination weddings as you know and um great for families so year round and amazing festivals too right mm, beautiful festivals and throughout the island so we invite clients simply go to our web our website www.visitjamaica.com and um just do festival and you'll have the list of all of the events no matter where on the island so for most clients, their point of arrivals will be in Montego Bay. We do have, that's where we have the Sangster International Airport. And most of the hotels are located on the North Coast. So Negril to Ochrios, I think, is where most of the clients are very familiar with. And how would you describe Jamaica? For me, it's a warm, loving place. Um, the greatest strength of the destination is uh, what everything that the island has to offer. And the greatest word that always comes to mind with Jamaica is the diversity. The diversity in the types of excursions, the diversity in the types of hotels. We have hotels for adults only, for families. Um, adults who want to party, adults who are looking for more zen, great big properties with something ongoing everywhere, small intimate properties, property that's specialized for families. Um, we mentioned the honeymoon and the wedding market, and we have all price points. So there is something definite. 
But one of the greatest strengths of the destination, of course, it's its people. They are warm, loving people. And it's always what comes back um, in terms of comments to me. I had such a lovely time with the Jamaicans. They are so warm. They're so welcoming. And you've experienced that so many times when you were there on island. Yes, absolutely. And there's such a... A, a, a mix of cultures within Jamaica as well, which is so yes. beautiful to see. Which is why the motto of the island is out of many one people. So it's all of these different nations that have populated the island that has really created this uniqueness that you'll find, to my mind, only in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, could we, we could be there now, could. <laughs> So, of course, beautiful white sand beaches on the island. That's also another great um, strength. But I think your clients have to be aware that anything between Montego Bay or Noche Rios, beautiful white sand beaches, but they'll be short. They'll be half a kilometer to a kilometer and a half long. It's really in the Negril area where you'll find this beautiful 11 kilometer white sand beach um, that you will find that is very unique to Jamaica. And of course, nature. Um, Jamaica is full of beautiful tropical forests. You'll have a, many botanical gardens and there's little hidden gems and waterfalls everywhere on the island. That's what I love about Jamaica. Yeah, so I think a lot of people don't really realize exactly how diverse Jamaica is. It's not mm. just about beaches. There's Whoa. so many beautiful little hidden gems everywhere on the islands that's so much worth exploring. And speaking of exploring, the culinary experience is, I mean, that's something that I absolutely enjoy every time I visit. So how do you describe the culinary experience in Jamaica? My, my stomach is already <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Jamaica is really known for its jerk chicken. I mean, that is one of the stable dishes, and you will find it at every hotel, every street corner. You will see these gentlemen cooking the chicken in these barrels. The traditional way of cooking jerk chicken is on charcoal. And the meat, as you can see here, is um, they put it on pimiento branches. And pimiento is what we get the allspice from, which is native to Jamaica. It is covered and then just cooked slowly for hours. The juice and the meat, and there's a little restaurant just outside of Montego Bay that's called Scotchies, mm -hmm. which is probably one of the best jerk chicken, although you and I disagree on that. <laughs> <laughs> you have another place that you prefer. <laughs> so, and I think that's the jerk center in Ochoa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's just a few dollars. It's delicious. And jerk chicken is traditionally served with... Um, what they call a festival, which is a fried bread. So if you're going to order jerk chicken, you have to have your festival with that. But Jamaica as a whole is more than just the jerk chicken. And um, the reputation of the destination is how well you eat, whether you're in a three and a four or five star property. Um, everyone is aware, of course, of Appleton, the coffee, red striped beer, which we're able to get here in Canada, thankfully. Although in Jamaica itself, red stripe now is flavored. You can have lemon, you can have sorrel. That's very typical yes. of Jamaican. So good, delicious. Um, patties of various, so many fruits and vegetables. The month of May, we're just finishing that now, is mango season right now in Jamaica. So you just stop along the road and you buy your mangoes from the vendors there. The national breakfast is ackee and saltfish. Is that one of your preferred dish? It is, and a lot of my friends, when they watch this video, would probably have a little chuckle because yes, absolutely, that is one of my favorite dishes for breakfast, yes. So ackee is actually a fruit that was imported uh, with the slave ships 
in the 1700 to Jamaica. And as you can see, it's the bottom picture there. So you eat the white flesh, the, the black portion is the black seed, and it is fried with codfish that comes actually from Newfoundland. So, and for years, what they have done is there's been this trade between Canada and Jamaica, and Newfoundland in exchange got some screech. So that has been um, the traditional breakfast with Jamaican. And for me, when I'm going to Jamaica is I cannot have breakfast without having Kalaloo, yeah. which is sort of um, green vegetable and delicious, full of iron. But the new tendency on the island is Ital cooking. So that's really from the farm to the table with no additives, nothing fresh, and it's a vegan cooking. Delicious, so there's quite a few restaurants that have just opened and that are really, really worth the stop. Uh, you'll have a chance to visit the farm and then they'll cook it for you and you'll have a nice variety of dishes. And for those who like to explore a little bit more, go off property and then discover Jamaica has so many different little restaurants all over the island. And you can go for a few dollars to a very high end, you know, with a fine dining experience, choice of wine and all of that. Jamaica really has it all for your clients. Oh, that's fantastic. And I completely agree. Now I'm going to go back to the um, jerk chicken because one thing that you and I do agree on is Boston Bay. Oh, <laughs> so that is uh, the the jerk chicken there in Boston Bay is something that you yeah. and I both agree. On. So, for those who are not familiar with Boston Bay, that's just a little bit east of Port Antonio, totally on the eastern tip, and that's where jerk chicken originated. Yes. So that's where it started. So you still have a few restaurants, and. Jerk is a little bit like barbecue. Everybody has their own specific recipe. Did you know that there's a jerk festival in Port Antonio? Yes. Oh, that's on my to-do list one year. <laughs> I know there's so many festivals and so many things to do. And so, I mean, you can fill your, your stay with so many different activities and events. It's incredible. And that's why people keep coming over and over again, because there's always something different. There's always something new that what Jamaica has to offer. Absolutely. Now, you had touched on um, some of the accommodations, the mm -hmm. uh, different types of, of accommodations that are available. And Jamaica is known for its diverse selection of uh, different styles of accommodations. Could you touch a, a little bit more upon the different styles that are available and for the different travel styles? Well, I think Jamaica, like a lot of the Caribbean, has a great diversity of products offered from your big, big all-inclusive to your very small, not as well known or our small intimate hotels. There's also villas, apartments that um, can be rented fully staff, no staff at all, really up to your clients. As I mentioned earlier, also you have adults only families or you're just your general properties. And again, in Jamaica, the beauty of it is um, whether it's a three or four of a five star, you don't need to fear. Um, the service, the food will be there, the great service. Now you ask me what I prefer, um, and I'm all about small hotels. So these are the, um, it's Rock House on the Cliffs of Negril. It's a very different in style, but it's very small, very intimate. Everybody gets to know one another very quickly, but you, everyone has their little corner. So you sort of have the sense that you're just on your own mm -hmm. and you can just recharge your batteries. Um, and of course, Negril, for me, the nightlife in Negril is very typical, very Jamaican with both feet in the sand. You've got this crooked stage with some of the best music you'll hear and you're dancing and everybody and they're showing you the steps. It's a little bit embarrassing when a nine-year-old looks at you and goes, you ain't got it and you've been trying so hard, but lots of fun. 
Yeah, and uh, in Negril, actually, there's a Canadian connection with Ottawa because just not far from where I live is uh, the spa. Mm -hmm. and the owners of the spa own a property called the Spa Retreat. The Spa Retreat so, is very small, intimate, mm -hmm. and they really highlight um, the spa treatments there. And yeah. the technician who actually give the service come to Ottawa for their training. Yes. So well, and it's it's similar cottage style to mm -hmm. well a lot of the the boutique styles uh, like you had mentioned on the cliff side so definitely a lot of villas and you can have the big resort style right. and a lot of options in Jamaica for sure mm -hmm. so there's something for everyone definitely That's what we always say absolutely <laughs> and what attractions and activities are a must-see and do that will enhance the traveler's experience? Well, traditionally what is well known, of course, is Duns River Falls. If you are in the Ocho Rios area, often I hear people that are in the grill saying, well, I want to do Duns River Falls. And I, to me, it's a nonsense to be doing three hours of driving to do an hour and a half when just an hour away you have YS Falls that are there. So Jamaica is really rich in various falls where you can go. So like Ocho Rios, Duns River Falls, that's the best known one, it's renowned. Uh, but then again, word of advice, you do not climb Duns River Falls when the cruise ship are in the port. <laughs> but you have Konono Falls that are not as well known. Um, there's the Blue Hole also that is not too, too far. Beautiful trekking for those who love walking in nature with a guide. As um, Jamaicans do not like to use tradition, like medicine as we would. If you have a headache, you will brew a tea. If you have fever, um, you will have lemongrass tea and all kinds of different plants that they will brew that will you know, cure whatever ache. And traditionally, if none of these work, then white rum will do the trick for you. Okay. So nature is prime, but there's also 12 golf courses on the island for the golfers. Four of them are located in the Montego Bay area. They're all five, 10 minute drives away from each other if you like to play different golf courses. Um, also different music festivals as we mentioned. And I think the best known one is some fest at the end of July. So that's the world's largest reggae festival. And it's just a blast. Um, great music, fun. You've got uh, carnival in the month of February, March. So lots of different activities that you can do. Again, go see our website and they will tell you where all the activities are ongoing. Yeah, so lots for adventure seekers, anyone that just wants to do some water sports, the nature, cultural, mm -hmm. you name it. Yeah. And what are some of the things that you uh, love about Jamaica? Well, I like to go a little bit off the beaten track. <laughs> Although the first one is not, because if you're in the grill, you have to go to Rick's Cafe. Uh, but to me, that is so Jamaican and ambiance. Um, it's this little cafe that's up on the cliff where you people go to watch the sunset. And as soon as the sun sets, there's a reggae band that will start playing music and it becomes a nightclub. So it's just gorgeous. You really need to go around four o'clock in the afternoon. It is on the most western tip of the island, gorgeous and just just fun uh, that you will have. But if you sort of go away from the main areas and go onto the south coast, you can do a Black River safari. Black River is one of the longest river on the island. Um, there are 300 crocodiles that live on the marshes of that river, but the bird, in terms of bird watching and the mangroves, just beautiful, beautiful. It's about two hours long. And to me, it's always too short. I would just go on and enjoy that. And the last one is Pelican Bar. So the thing about the Pelican Bar is you actually have to take a boat to get out there. And it has survived tropical storms, 
hurricanes. It's been there forever. Um, bring a flag, bring a t-shirt. You can hook it up onto the ceiling. If you decide to go fishing and you catch something, they'll cook it there for you. You have a red stripe. When it's too warm, you jump into the water. It's just a blast. So, and that to me is Jamaica. It's these little odd places. Um, as I mentioned before, nature. But one point I didn't mention either is the history. There's a lot of history in Jamaica. Uh, it was one of the richest islands of the Caribbean. So you can still visit a lot of those great houses that are still standing today. Um, even Port Royal um, on the Kingston, just outside of Kingston. Lots of history. If you've seen Pirates of the Caribbean, that was the place to go. Wow. And what about Bob Marley? Bob Marley, there are two different sites that you can go to. So between Ocho Rios and Runaway Bay, you can go inland and visit the village of Nine Mile, which is where he was born. So you will have his whole life history, his biography, his music, how the whole thing started. But if you're into the Kingston area, then you have his last residence and recording studio. Okay. So that's where. So this and this last point, I um, little Ochi, I had the chance to go eat there. It's a seafood place, but they do not have a menu because everything depends on what the fishermen brought in. So when you arrive at the restaurant, the waitress will take you to this uh, refrigerator. You open the door and you choose your fish, your seafood, your lobster. And then there's 16 different ways in which they can cook it for you. Wow. You eat in these little outside barges. It is delicious. One of the best meal I ever had. And actually there were four of us and it cost us about $90. And we, we were able to do two meals with it because wow. we brought leftovers and we asked the hotel where we were staying at, we just asked them to reheat everything and that's where we were. So actually, so between Scotchies and Little Ochi, I'm a little bit torn as to which one I really prefer. And Little Ochi is located where? That's on the South Coast. Okay. That's oh. on the South Coast. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And what are a few things that tourists wouldn't necessarily know about Jamaica? Um, well, there's a lot of trekking. So as I mentioned, whether you're on the South Coast, whether you're in the Blue Mountain area, which is between Ocho Rios and Kingston, there's a lot of walking tours that you can take with guides that I mentioned before, where they'll, they'll show you the different bird life or the, the flora. There are over three... 3,000 flower bushes on the island. And to me, it's the smell of the island when you get there and the, the whole. So I just, I've done a few of those. I love them. The one I have not done yet and that I want to do is uh, you will spend the night at the foothills of the Blue Mountain. They will wake you up at three in the morning. And then with a flashlight, you start going up to the top of the Blue Mountain range, which is, of course, the highest. Um, summit of the island and given that you are on the eastern tip of the island you have breakfast while watching the sunrise oh. so one of the guys I, I was talking to was telling me that you can see cuba from far away and when i was talking to my co-workers they tell me that you need a little bit of rum in your coffee to see cuba <laughs> so i want to test that theory uh, bird watching I I <laughs> so bird watching as i mentioned before again several areas there are over 200 and different types of species that are really native to jamaica so um there's that and there's a lot of people who don't realize that the novels of james bond written by ian fleming were written in jamaica that's his birthplace at uh, ian fleming's residence at called golden eye so, which is now a boutique property that you can go and, and spend the night at. Um, so, Dr. No, the first James Bond movie, was actually filmed in, in its entirety in Jamaica. And the latest one that's coming out in November, No Time to Die, is also, I think the first 20 minutes are filmed in Jamaica. So, I can't wait to see um, what they've done with that. Oh, perfect. So, and one of the activities that's very also typical to Jamaica is just
going down these rivers on these bamboo rafts. Uh, so there are three different rivers, in, one in Port Antonio and the other two in the Montego Bay area, that you can just go down the river very softly. Um, you're in nature. There'll be also some ruins of different great houses that you can see from far away. But they were actually uh, introduced by Errol Flynn. And Errol Flynn was one of the greatest star in the 1940s. 50s because Port Antonio was also known as the Hollywood of the Caribbean and legend is that he never came twice with the same young lady <laughs> when he came to Port Antonio and he's the one who introduced the seats on these rafts so that he could seduce the young lady in question and that's how the whole thing started. That's why they're very popular with uh, couples. <laughs> So Jamaica, as I mentioned before, uh, one of the richest islands of the Caribbean in its glorious days of the sugarcane plantations. Mm -hmm. So there are so many great houses that can be visited. I think the best known one is Rose Hall in Montego Bay, and that's known as the residence of Jamaica's white witch. So it is said that she killed her three husbands and hundreds of slaves and was actually killed uh, um, during a rebellion of one of our slaves. So you can do the, the tour during the day. And if you're a little bit more adventurous and that you like strong emotions, I dare you to do it in the evening. Ghosts are guaranteed. Okay. Um, and then, of course, Port Royal that I mentioned before, it was known as one of the most wicked city of the Caribbean because that was the foothold. All of the great pirates actually had a house in Port Antonio, along with the British Marine. They actually lived very peacefully. So Captain Morgan, Blackbeard, uh, Calico Jack, all of these actually had a house. Um, in, and it was said that per square foot, you had the greatest number of taverns, prostitute and exchange houses where the pirates would come in and bring their loot and exchange it for gold pieces. So two thirds of the city unfortunately disappeared underneath the sea following a, uh, an earthquake. But it is worth the visit, definitely um, great. Blue Mountain Range that I mentioned before, but Blue Mountain is also where you'll have some of the best coffee in the world produced, um, some great coffee plantations. So the, again, that's a must um, to visit and see the whole process from the plant um, all the way to your cup of coffee. There's a whole process there that's definitely worth it. And I think the last point is most people don't realize that you can actually surf in Jamaica. So just a little bit east of Port Antonio during the summer month, there's even a, uh, a tournament. So for those who like surfing, off you go. I learned something new today. <laughs> I have no idea about the surfing. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was incredible incredible information. I appreciate all this information that you provided today. And I continue to look forward to sending our clients to Jamaica. I absolutely love this destination. It, uh, my heart is there. It, uh, it, it's beautiful. The people, the culture, the food, the music, everything about Jamaica is wonderful. So thank you so much for taking the time to share all of this information. Thank you, Vanessa. And just to let you know, we can't wait to welcome your clients. Uh, but meanwhile, stay safe and one love. Thank you.